All right, welcome everyone to the presentation. Today, I want to go through 12 common mistakes made by new federal grant seekers. And these are in no particular order, and there's no judgment. If anyone watching this made these mistakes, hell, I've, uh, quite frankly, I've done most of them myself. And really, the best way to get better, besides repetition, you know, practice, 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 is to learn from mistakes made by others ahead of you. So with that, let's get into it. Starting too late, yeah. Uh, developing a federal grant application takes a good chunk of time. Most, most grants have an application window of 30 to 45 days, and you'll need all of it to prepare a competitive proposal. If you start too late, either because you took too long to decide to apply or you didn't discover the grant until well after it opened, you're going to be at a, a big disadvantage. Uh, I'd say the minimum amount of time you need is two weeks. And even then, that assumes you have a reasonably well-developed program concept, a rough idea for the budget, and, and your external partners are, well, they're already on board and ready to go. If you're starting from square one with two weeks or less uh, before the deadline, yeah, it's probably best uh, to pass and wait for the next opportunity to come along. Uh, proposals, <clears throat> excuse me, proposals thrown together that quickly are rarely competitive. Uh, and to be brutally honest, they're often complete garbage because you just don't have enough time to fully form your program concept and you miss a lot of the little details that end up hurting you during the review process. So uh, if anything, you want to get started much earlier rather than later. Okay, missing the deadline, huge mistake. Does this even need explanation? Manage your calendar and your workflow so you will apply on time or maybe even a day or two early. Every proposal should be read by an outsider prior to submission. How does it read? Is the message clear? Is the project concept easy to understand or is it confusing? Did spell check miss anything? I mean, you, we've, we've all had that happen because you may have a word that's spelled correctly, but spell check doesn't understand the concept. So you've got, you have a, a word that is spelled correctly, but it's the wrong word for the context, you know, and well, and on and on and on. I mean, don't let anything go out the door without a second or third set of eyes reviewing it. A lack of discipline. This one's, it's a, this is an interesting one. Novice federal grant seekers tend to take a shotgun approach with their efforts. They go after every open grant, large and small, regardless of whether a good fit for their organization. The theory being, the more applications you have out there, the better the chances are of receiving funding. Not true. In fact, this is one of the worst ways to approach federal grants. You can pull this move when you're applying for small five and $10,000 grants uh, from companies and foundations because the applications don't require much effort. Not so with federal grants. Federal applications are far more detailed <clears throat> and the process is a lot more time intensive. Applying for every federal grant that comes along is a sure way to quickly suffer burnout. And 
you know, if if by applying for every federal grant means applying for multiple grants at once, there's a high risk of important details slipping through the cracks, especially for new grant seekers who aren't used to juggling multiple applications. I mean, if this is your first go around with federal grants, you're going to have a hard time already just trying to keep track of all the little details that one application requires, let alone multiple. So experienced, successful federal grant seekers, they know a focused approach is the best strategy. Wait for the great, uh, right, wait, excuse me, wait for the right grant opportunities to open up and apply for one, maybe two at a time. Not registering early. New new federal applicants often don't realize how long it takes to complete the required registrations with the System for Award Management at samsam.gov and grants.gov. Um, it's not like creating a new account on your favorite, you know, online or shopping website. Uh, there are a lot of questions to answer. There are several verifications <clears throat> between federal computer systems and and now you have to submit a, a notarized letter to verify your authority to submit proposals from grants and contra uh, for grants and contracts. The process can take up to two to three weeks. And if you wait until the last minute to register, you could uh, you could miss your grant deadline. So start early. Register when you're not even going after a grant. That way, you'll have all those registrations complete by the time the grant opportunity comes along, and you won't even have to worry about it. No persistence and no patience. I guess I could have made two slides out of these, but the, the two are so interconnected. I just thought, well, I'll make one, not one out of them. So federal grants are not a quick fix for your funding needs, and they're not easy, not easy to apply for them, and they're not easy to manage. Like the saying goes, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. A common problem with new Federal grant seekers is they don't have the stick with itness. They apply once and they give it their best effort. And when they don't receive the grant, well, they give up and never try again. I mean, hell, well, where's the fun in that? Federal grants is a long term play. You need patience when going after them. You need to put in, you know, at least one to two years of going after federal grants before you before you really get good at the process, assuming you're doing it yourself and using no or very little you know, outside consulting assistance. And you need patience while waiting for funding agencies to make their decisions. From the time you submit your application to the time you receive a decision, it could be six months to a year, and in some cases, even longer. Again, patience is essential with federal grants. You know, and don't give up. If you're not successful the first time, keep trying. New grant seekers often miss basic elements, you know, in their excitement to get working on their proposal. They read the grant's overall purpose, and boom, they're off to the races. Races. I need to work on my enunciation. But that aside. Anyway, but, you know, it's those fine details that make all the difference. Applicant eligibility, funding priorities, page limits, font type, font size, line spacing, table formatting, headers, footers, budget limits, allowable, 
and non-allowable expenses, attachments, and so on. If you fail to adhere to any one of these uh, little elements, and I call them little, but they're actually kind of big, your proposal will likely be disqualified and tossed out the initial screening and never reviewed. And that's the last thing you want after investing a lot of time preparing a full application. So before you get started, always read the RFPs fine print. Underline, highlight, make big notes, but always read that fine print. Okay, inconsistencies. Now, in fairness, this can happen to even experienced grant seekers, but it's most common with newer applicants. Everything in your program narrative, the budget and the budget narrative needs to tie together. All the dots need to be connected. The most frequent mistake is to mention, excuse me, the most frequent ma uh, mistake is to mention an activity in the program narrative that clearly requires a budget item, but the applicant fails to include it in the grant's budget or, or the matching funds description if you're providing cash or in-kind services. And reviewers pick up on these things. Uh, they notice when applicants say, you know, we'll do X, Y, and Z, but the budget only mentions expenses for X and Y. And the reverse holds true too. An applicant includes expenses in the budget that can't be tied back to an activity or activities in the program narrative. And that's why the budget narrative is so important. You know, use the budget narrative to spell out why an expense is necessary for your program. When possible, specifically connect expenses to your scope of work or your timeline or you know individual portions of your narratives you don't want reviewers thinking uh, well why are they spending money on a fill in the blank what's the purpose of this i don't remember anything about this in the narrative that's not what you want reviewers thinking as they're going through your proposal make everything connect to the reviewers and you'll score much higher. Okay, what do I mean by applying too soon? I'm not talking about applying before a deadline. I'm talking about applying for federal grants before the organization has sufficient capacity to apply for the grants and to manage them if it receives an award. Nonprofit organizations have, and, and some public agencies, but most often nonprofits have a natural life cycle. You know, in the beginning and developing phases, they're working on the basics, their governance, their human capital, their formal policies, procedures, and systems, and their external relations. Uh, at this point, you know, it's really best for them to test the waters with private grants and local city or county grants uh, to get accustomed to the process. Once they successfully manage a few small to mid-sized grants, go to the next level and apply for state grants and so on. In baseball parlance, applying for federal grants is like playing in the major leagues. Your organization is new and still learning the fundamentals. It's best to spend some time in the minors, perfect your craft with smaller grants, and then graduate to federal grants when you have some experience. And if you're not sure where uh, where your organization is on the readiness spectrum, I have a free organizational readiness assessment that you can use. I'll post a link to it in the video's description. It's a, it's a PDF file. Just click on the link and it will download to, uh, to your laptop or whatever.
do you even know why you want a federal grant? Or are you simply in the we need money mode? You need to have a purpose for those grant dollars. That is, you either need to have an existing program to expand or a new program to pilot that fits a grant's legislative priorities. A lot of new organizations go at this backwards. They see the grant dollars and scramble to create new programs just to apply for the funding, even if the new program isn't really aligned with their organization's mission, you know, just to pay for staff and operational costs. And this is a horrible practice. Before you go after grants, you need to have a strong sense of self-awareness regarding your organization's mission and your vision so you can be laser focused on the programs and initiatives you want to start. If you're chasing after everything, you know, just to keep the lights on, you'll end up in a vicious cycle like we talked about earlier with the no discipline pitfall. Stay true to your mission. Don't chase grants. Let them come to you. The right one will come along. Again, just be patient. Here, but this is a big one. Federal grant newbies often think Uncle Sam is going to become their golden goose. Once the applications go out the door, federal dollars will just start start flowing back and they'll be on easy street. <laughs> yeah, right. No, wrong. Federal grants take a long time to cultivate and to get into a good rhythm with the application process. And realistically, uh, you'll probably lose more times than you win, and that's not a statement at all about your organization and what you're doing. It's just a function of too many applicants for too few grant dollars. When you're brand new, set, set realistic annual goals. So for example, maybe try to, try to earn 200,000 uh, in grants in year one, 500,000 in year two, and so on. Uh, if you think you're going to be swimming in millions of dollars within the first year, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. And finally, new grant seekers rarely explore funding alternatives. You know, is a federal grant the best option for what you need funded? I've talked to a lot of frustrated federal grant novices who spent a lot of time and energy going after really small grants, you know, $10,000 and $12,000 grants, instead of exploring alternative sources. Uh, you know, for, those for those relatively small amounts, personally, I would say less than... Mm, Twenty-five or thirty thousand, I would avoid federal grants. Uh, I would look at the current or your your current organizational budget to see if any funds could be reallocated. Uh, I would search for small private grants. I would explore local fundraising events, and I would even take a shot at crowdsource uh, a crowdsourcing campaign. I think you can raise the money you need a lot faster with far fewer strings, uh, far fewer strings attached than going after federal dollars when you're looking at those relatively small amounts. And those small grants, thousand or twelve, I mean, they are indeed available from the Fed, but commonly go to grantees who have a Funding relation with the department, an ongoing grade. So until you get to the point when a department calls you to see if you need additional funding, choose an easier path uh, to raise those smaller dollar amounts.
And I couldn't resist adding, adding a bonus tip. And this one isn't just for new applicants. Even experienced federal grant seekers still miss this one. Grant opportunities don't always post to both grants.gov and the federal register on the same day. Sometimes there's a difference of, of up to one week uh, between, you know, sometimes one will post on grants.gov and then a week later posts on the federal register, sometimes the reverse. And with application windows as short as 30 days, it's essential to check both sites uh, so you don't miss anything. You know, it's funny actually, I thought of another common, uh, another common pitfall or mistake by, made by new federal grant seekers. Uh, but I think I'll add that to a uh, to a follow up video. It talks about um, it'll talk about sustainability uh, program sustainability and sustainability plans uh, for after after funding runs out. So that's just a little bit of a tease. God knows when I'll make that. But anyway, that is. That's all I've got for now. So that's that. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate the time you spent here with me uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever the well, whatever the case may be, wherever you are. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm here to help however I can. Uh, if you found this useful, like it or give it a thumbs up. And, you know, if you can think of any mistakes uh, that I missed, or if you want to share your first time federal grant experience, get in touch with me or, or you know, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, oh, and of course, feel free to leave a comment. I always love the feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future presentations. Cool. All right. Thanks. And I will see you next time.